Good afternoon and welcome everyone. We welcome you to the penultimate lecture of the Shastra Spotlight series on the Wells Fargo Day 4 of Shastra 2021. We are extremely honored to have with us Dr. Mohammed Yunus, Nobel Peace Laureate and founder of Grameen Bank. Dr. Yunus is the father of both social business and microcredit, the founder of Grameen Bank and of more than 50 other companies in Bangladesh. In 2006, Dr. Yunus and Grameen Bank were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their efforts through microcredit to create economic and social development. He's a recipient of 61 honorary degrees from universities across 24 countries and is one of the only seven individuals to have received all of the Nobel Peace Prize, the United States Presidential Medal of Freedom and the United States Congressional Gold Medal. We're extremely honored to have you with us today, sir. Delighted to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, sir. So without further ado, let's get straight into the fireside chat. So uh, first, we'd like to begin with microcredit and microfinance, a term you invented. So in the 70s, you invented microcredit as we know it, because low-income people could not access traditional credit. So could you explain what the term microcredit or microfinance is, such that it's understandable to the layman? And where did the idea of microcredit come from? Well, thank you. Well, <clears throat> we didn't have any words when we began. Uh, we were just trying to help people in the village <clears throat> next to the university campus where we, uh, teach, I was teaching. And extreme poverty. Poverty, uh, uh, as you may hear the word dirt poor. It's yeah. extreme poor. Uh, a lot of uh, hunger. People were dying uh, of hunger. Uh, we had a famine uh, at that mm -hmm. time. So there I was trying to see <clears throat> there's something that I can do to help people. And many things I did in a different direction, but one thing caught my attention more and more, the loan sharking in the village. Uh, people loan shark give a small amount of money and grab every single position the other person has in the name of that loan. So the victims were so helpless in the face of this situation. So I was trying to see if I can do something to help those people. So one idea came that why don't I lend the money myself? If I lend the money, they will come to me and I give the money. They don't have to go to the loan shark. So the problem of that person is solved. So I thought that's a good idea, why don't I do that? So I started lending money myself and um, giving people money they need so that they don't have to go to the loan shark. And it became very popular. And I picked up a big controversy with the banks. I was oh. criticizing the banks. The banks are designed in a wrong way. I said, the bank's job is to lend money to people, <clears throat> but you do it in such a funny way. You lend the money to the people who already have lots of money. And you don't lend the money to people who don't have money. So I said, this is ridiculous. We should be doing the other way. You should be lending money to people who don't have money first. After you exhausted it, then you go to people who have some money and more money. Of course, banks kind of brushed it off, they laughed. Uh, you don't understand anything about banking. I said, yes, I'm glad I don't understand because it doesn't make sense to me why you should do that. So I said, banks should be the other way, the way I'm doing, lending money to poor people. So that word, lending money to poor people, gradually that became the standard description of what I do lending a small amount of money to poor people. And then later on, it became lending a small amount of money to poor women, because we focused on women. But in the process, when it became known outside of Bangladesh, they wanted to use a word to describe what we do. So they focused on small loan. And so small, it's a micro loan. So that's how the micro credit word was coined. That word didn't exist in English dictionary. Just to explain what we do, lending tiny, tiny little money to poor people. So that's a micro credit. Later on, some people thought, well, credit is only one thing. You are doing many things, others, uh, savings and services, mm -hmm. which call it finance. So I said, okay, as long as you understand what I'm doing, microfinance. So it's alternatively used, micro credit and microfinance. So that became a standard word globally. And now that idea has spread all over the world. 
Okay, sir, that's quite fascinating. And to dig a little bit deeper, what have been the overall achievements of microcredit so far? And what do you think might have been some of the shortfalls? Well, one thing, that idea that you can lend money to poor people was dismissed right away. It's impossible. It cannot be done, period. You don't even think about it. And you, banks promoted that idea that when they are accused, they said, oh, it's impossible to lend money to poor people. How can you lend money to poor people? If you give them the money, they will eat it up because their stomach is empty. So once they eat it up, they cannot pay it back. So it's impossible. They called it in a more technical terms. They call it poor people are not credit worthy. They are not credit worthy. See? So I picked up that word. I started again battling with the banks. I said, look, who are you to judge people to call them not being credit worthy? People should be judging you because you are not people worthy. You have not designed your bank in a way that you can deal with the people. These are the people that you cannot deal. So you fix yourself up rather than asking people to fix themselves. It's not people to fix themselves. It's you to fix yourself. So that continued, that battle continued. And the idea spread because this problem existed all over the world. Uh, <clears throat> banking system cannot reach the way it has been designed, cannot reach more than half the population of the entire world. It's impossible for them because this is designed for rich people. So when they come to the poor people, they fail. Then they blame the poor people, not the system that they're following, this institution. So he created that alternative system and it became known and spread not only in Bangladesh, all over Asia. I'm sure there are lots of many microcredit programs in India and many around the world in Latin America, all over Europe. Uh, we had microcredit program in Sweden, in uh, Norway, in uh, Russia, in uh, Germany, in Italy, all, all the all European countries also, besides Africa, Latin America, and so on. And also we have programs in the United States. One program <clears throat> that we run there, recently we started called Drum in America. And it, it is uh, now operated in uh, 24, uh, branches, through 24 branches in 14 cities, like New York, Boston, Houston, Los Angeles, San Francisco, all the major cities, they have this microcredit program called Grammy in America. It works beautifully, same way. So this is the good part of it. Bad part of it is, as it became popular, as many, many microcredit programs are being born, some people found a different idea. Why don't we use microcredit to make money for ourselves? They say, we created microcredit to help people. We had no intention of making money out of microcredit. We call this kind of business, later on we call them social business. Social business is a business where you don't want to make any profit for yourself, but the entire business is devoted to solving a problem. For us, microcredit Grameen Bank was like that. We, we had no intention of personally benefiting from it. But as it expanded, some people thought, oh, this is a good idea. So the loan shark is starting running microcredit program or microcredit program people becoming loan shark themselves. I said, that's a very funny thing. We started microcredit to help people and fight the loan shark. Now our tool has become a tool for the loan shark. So I said, that's a very sad thing. And many uh, institutions started with IPO uh, to make more money, to raise more funds and promising that if you lend money to poor people, you make lots of profit up by doing that. Again, it's a loan sharking idea. Uh, so they became victims of that. So that was a wrong turn in microcredit. So now we said <clears throat> microcredit is a social business. It should be run as a social business. So I say there's a right microcredit and there's a wrong microcredit. So this uh, loan shark microcredit is the wrong microcredit. So that's one has to be very careful. <clears throat> Okay, sir, that was quite interesting. So as you said, uh, the concept has spread all across the world. And do you think that the model of micro lending that worked so well in Bangladesh and that is working so well, does it work everywhere in the world or does it need some kind of customization depending on the place? We always insisted that the, it should be retained as it is. It should not be changed because if you change, you may give away the basic feature of the bank itself because it's based on the principle of trust, because we don't have any collateral in the system. So that's a major shift from the banking system. 
everything banks does is on the basis of collateral. If you want to take some money from the bank, you have to first put your assets, put your uh, collateral against it. So against that, they will give you the money. In case you fail to uh, pay back, they will take over your assets. We don't have that thing. We just dismiss the whole idea. And this is a business which is based on trust. Uh, there is no paper. There is no legal document. Uh, we also <clears throat> kind of tell people that look, microcredit and Grameen Bank is a system where there's lawyers have no role to play. So in our entire banking system that we built, there is no lawyer at all. It's a, it's a lawyer-free banking. <clears throat> so that's so you don't have to move away from that. It's based on trust. And we also try to explain, like, look, uh, how wrong the banking system is, because credit bank deals with credit. Credit means trust. That's the original meaning of the word credit. So I said banks took that word credit, but built an institution based on distrust. So the moment you move into a bank, they look at you as if you are a potential danger for them because you are going to hit them somehow. I said, when we do it, we see as a friend because we have mutual trust and the whole thing is based on trust. And we lend out on the basis of trust, not just a few thousand rupees or a hundred thousand rupees, billions and billions of rupees we lend out, but no papers. But it comes back, we had no problem and so on. So we retain the basic character. Even when we do in the United States, in order to do that, we send our people from Bangladesh who run our branches to go and start exactly the same thing as we do it in the village of Bangladesh. Everybody in New York got very shocked. How can you do things which is in the village of Bangladesh and the poor women in Bangladesh in the United States? I said, well, that's the way it is. And they resisted it. I said, then we have to know business to run it here. They said, no, you do it. So we did it exactly the same way <clears throat> and worked beautifully. Uh, we have been doing it for the last 12 years and we had no problem with getting our money back. In the first 10 years, we have lent over $1 billion with no papers, nothing. Now we have come to a stage where uh, we have been lending more than a billion dollars each year. So imagine how fast it grows and how big it becomes, but still no papers. Even during the pandemic, we had no problem getting money back and so on. So that's how we try to do that. <clears throat> That is really nice to hear. And if you look at the cause of uh, microcredit itself, it's because of the inequality in wealth distribution, right? So what are the causes of wealth polarization and where should we start correcting the machine? Uh, you know, hit the very big point. Uh, that's the root of all the problems. We created a financial or a, uh, economic system. The whole problem is in designing of the economic system. We designed an economic system which results into global warming. So you see it every day. That's a net result. So when we complain about global system, uh, we cannot blame anybody else but ourselves because we design the businesses and everything which creates a global warming. And global warming is something which is going to eliminate us from this planet because we cannot survive on this planet. So I said, we do that, but we are not trying to fix the machine which created it. We're only blaming each other, and all for self well and this thing. Everything is true, but you have to go to the root cause. Root cause is we interpreted human being in the wrong way in economics. You know how human being is interpreted in economics? They say human beings are driven by self-interest. See, this is the core of economics. Meaning all human beings are 100% selfish. So in the process, we accepted this idea of being selfish and became selfish, became money-making robots. We don't see anything else. Only thing we sniff, only thing we smell is money. Our life is money. I said, that's the wrong thing to begin with. Human beings are so different. I said, if you want to be close to real human beings, you must define human being as a slightly different way, at least. 
is he is driven by self interest at the same time he is driven by collective interest that idea of collective interest doesn't exist in anywhere in economics it's all about you all about me how much money i make how much money i get from you and how much money you get from me and more money i make more successful i am i said that's not true so there's at all the wrong conceptions so as long as this remains as it is will continue to create a, a very destructive kind of uh, structure that we have right now so one of the thing that it created besides the global warming is extreme concentration of wealth because now everything is being sucked away from the people so if you prepare a map showing where the people are and where the wealth are wealth is on an income scale if you take dollar a day people those people who live on a dollar a day a huge number of people so you are at the bottom dollar a day and the number of people 2 dollar a day another huge 3 dollar a day entire population under poverty line 3 dollar a day 4 dollar a day still huge number 5 dollar 50 cents a day half the population of the entire world 5 dollar 50 cents a day and you go to 10 dollars a day now it's becoming smaller but it's still huge number you see by the time you get 100 dollar a day you are almost coming to 90% of the population is under here so where is the wealth wealth is not here because they are just surviving there's no wealth no accumulation here wealth is way above in the scale on the top where you have the uh, 100000 dollar a day million dollar a day that's where the wealth is 99% of the global wealth all the wealth of the world 99% of it is in the, up in the sky in this map where is the people 99% of the people are at the bottom so i said what kind of economy is this wealth is on the one side people are on the one side and that distance between the people and the wealth at every second is getting larger and larger if you look at india for example you can make a map you'll see the same thing 99% of the people at the just at the end of this map and wealth is on the top of the map if you can make the map very high then you'll see the wealth there so this is the and that wealth is going away from people it's not coming near to the people so i said that's a danger part of it that's where the poverty that's where everything is caused when the pandemic came you saw people who were on a 3 dollar a day under poverty now they are pushed down Two dollar a day, two dollar fifty. Just they're below the poverty line. Just they're surviving somehow, but they are losing their income. They're becoming more poor. But the rich people during this period make extra billions of dollars. So that is the essence in which economy works. So what I keep saying that you have to redesign the whole machine. It can be done. It's all you see. Economy economics is just like a software. you build the software to achieve a goal so before you sit down to software your achieve your goal is you want to create a world or a society where wealth and people live together and you design the software accordingly now we don't go to the software so what can you do bhagwan has done it or somebody else has done it it's not it's a fate has done it. nothing it's not a fate nothing simply you made mistakes very gross mistakes to make so many millions of billions of people suffer in this planet and not just once continuously doing that and at the end we are coming to an end of the world because we have not fixed that uh, this will explode and the human existence will be over and i keep saying human being is the most endangered species on the planet right now but we i said our house is burning but we are having a party inside the house we don't notice we don't take we don't take into cognizance that this house is under fire because we are so addicted to our life it's all about addiction we are addicted to life and that addiction forgets that we are here to be perished very soon so we have to get out of that addiction and stop the fire and build a new world and that's the world i say is a world that i would like to build would be a world of three zeros zero net carbon emission 
because it's unnecessary. We can build it. If we design it, new software, we can build the whole world will be net zero carbon emission. And then net, sorry, zero wealth concentration. Wealth will not be concentrated. Wealth and people will live together. That's what its destiny is. That's what it should be instead of the way it has created. So we have designed a world. It's a zero wealth concentration and zero unemployment. Because like you are, you are studying uh, engineering, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is coming to replace human beings from everything. Not just workers in the factory, and professional people, of course, uh, teachers, uh, uh, bureaucrats, uh, bankers, or whatever, whatever profession. They'll all be replaced. Painters, artists, singers, all be replaced by artificial. So the question is, what will be the role of human being? I said the answer is very simple. Human being will be turned into garbage. They have no use, waste. Throw them out from the planet. That's the time coming, unless we are careful where we use our artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence can be a blessing. Artificial intelligence can be a curse. Today, we are pushing it into the curse direction. That's the point. Thank you, sir. That was very insightful. Uh, you earlier mentioned that Grameen Bank is now a social business, right? So what has led Grameen Bank into a foundation and then from microfinance to a social business. Yeah, it was always a um, social business. It's never money-making business. Uh, it is still, my Grameen Bank is a social business. It's, a, it's still a bank. It was never a foundation. So Grameen Bank is a separate entity. Some people created something. You see, the Grameen name worldwide became very popular because of microcredit. So they put Grameen name in everything. Uh, Gamin Foundation, Gamin Trust, Gamin this, Gamin that, all over the world. They don't understand what the word is, but they love that word Gamin because it showed something remarkable. It was a very simple idea, nothing complication. Simple idea, but it works for people. So the, that's how the Gamin Foundation was created. Just not one Gamin Foundation, there are several Gamin Foundations. Gamin uh, Capital, Gamin this, Gamin that. So, so these are separate. The Gamin Bank, is Bangladesh, is in Bangladesh. It works like we, when we did in United States, we call it Gamin America. When we do it in Mexico, we call it Gamin Mexico. So Gamin, uh, whatever, Gamin Russia, Gamin Netherlands, Gamin this one. So people are familiar with Gamin, so they understand, they, they actively support that. Uh, so this is what we do. Social business came during our work in Gamin Bank. We saw many other problems. Problem of healthcare for poor people. When you are poor, you are also poor in health. So it goes together. So we wanted to address that issue. So we created separate programs for the poor people. We designed it as a uh, health center, as a health insurance. Again, we tried to do it in a business way so that it sustains itself. It doesn't run out of steam. It always can be replenished with its own thing. So we tried to distinguish between charity and social business. Charity is something you do to help the people with health care. Suppose health care is something that you want to do. So you bring the money and provide them free health care. So when you do the free health care, in six months, in one year, the money is over and you stop because there's no money, no health care. So because the money in charity can be used only once. It's a one-way traffic. It goes out, never comes back. So I said, why don't you do it in a business way? I give the health care, but I charge a small fee for that so that I can cover the cost. I made it very cheap and I designed it so way, such a way that it's inexpensive, but good quality. And then I cover the cost. Then I call it social business. It's not done for making any profit for me, personal profit. So I dismiss the whole idea of personal profit and bring the sustainability into it. So call it social business. You do a business to solve a problem. That's how we define a social business. A business to solve a problem without any intention of making personal profit out of it. So this is a kind of uh, dismissal of the uh, existing banking, uh, existing business system. In economics, they are taught, they teach us that uh, if you are in business, you have to maximize your profits. So we created another kind of business which doesn't exist in economics, a business not to make profit. 
So when we maximize this profit, we say not to make profit. This we learned from microcredit. When you created Grameen Bank, I said, uh, when people ask me, how did you design it? I said, it was very simple. I looked at the conventional banks, how they do it. Once I learned how they do it, I just do the opposite. They go to the rich, I go to the poor. They go to the city, I go to the village. They go to men, I go to women. They ask for collateral, I dismiss collateral. They say bank people should come to the bank. I said, no, bank should come to the people. So I reversed everything. That's why I'll be able to do the things which they couldn't do. So I said, that's the same thing. All the problems with global warming and everything that we created is because of the system of profit maximization. So I created another kind of business. I said, there are two kinds of interests, self-interest and uh, collective interest. For self-interest, you have the profit maximization. For collective interest, you have zero, zero personal profit. Then you can focus on the solving of the problems. And I keep insisting, and I repeat to you for, uh, for audience here also, nothing is impossible for human beings. All we need to do is to make up our mind to do it. If you want to make up our mind to do it, we have such a creative facility capability that we can get it done. If you want to make sure wealth and people live together, this is our firm uh, decision that this is what we want to do. Tomorrow we'll build a new system. Just like the way they did the micro credit, same way. To reverse some. First of all, you have to do change the whole banking system. The banking system is the vehicle which creates all, it becomes a vehicle to take all the wealth to the few people. So if you reverse that banking system, instead of taking the wealth to the top, you put it in a reverse gear. It brings the wealth back to the people. That's the whole thing. So this is the direction that we need to go. That's quite wonderful to hear. And Grameen Bank has taken some amazing initiatives. But uh, was there ever a time that you thought that Grameen Bank wouldn't happen? And how did you overcome those challenges? Well, if you do something new, something unfamiliar, everybody criticizes it. Everybody says crazy. There's a famous, very conventional word, crazy. Somebody out of his mind. Because you're doing upside down. As I was explaining it, they go to the rich, I go to the poor. And I said, this is a crazy guy. He doesn't understand what banking is. So they will say all kinds of things. If you're, if you're firm in your belief, in your objective, you stay put. You know that there's always failure. If you do something new, you have to risk failures. Failure doesn't mean you stop that. Failure means you go back and redesign it. You are a mechanical engineer, you should be knowing that. If something goes wrong, that doesn't mean the machine, whole machine is wrong. Somewhere something didn't get attacked. So you identify that, fix it, again start it, then you say that. Then some noise comes up. You stop the machine and see where the new noise is coming from. So it's a continuous trial and error, trial and error. Finally, you find produce the best machine ever. Perfect machine that it runs and without any trouble and guarantee that kind of thing and so on. So this is every, it applies to everything. Nothing comes in a kind of sealed way that is going to succeed right away. So every time you start a new program, even microcredit today, you have questions. Maybe we have done it many times before, but this is a new context, new people here, yeah, and that we are using the new people to do it. Will they do it right? Do they understand what we are talking about? Because for the first time, they are here doing that. For them, it's the first time. For you, for the, it's many times. So the, it's always a risk. Then you uh, kind of correct yourself as you go along. So this is how it is. Everywhere is in And initially, you have all kinds of problems. We had political problems. At that time, in the 70s and 80s, the popular thing is the social revolution, communism. These are the common things among the young people. So they, were, the, the, they attacked us from the right. They attacked us from the right, left. The left attacked us, saying that this is the uh, certified uh, uh, model coming from the United States because I'm coming from the United States at that time where I was teaching. So I came back from. He said he brought all this from the United States to make sure capitalism get to the grassroots because he's giving loans to people to start a business. And it's very contradictory to what the socialist economies are supposed to. So he's a, he's a CIA agent. So they see you as an enemy of the people. So, so you tolerate that. You, uh, sometimes I will joke with them because there are many friends who are on that side, the extreme left side. 
And I said, look, you get your act fast. You keep keep on talking about the revolution. That revolution never comes. You better do it fast because I'm coming to your village, all the villages. Now we are doing it on the 30 villages. Soon we'll take over all the villages of Bangladesh. Then you'll regret. If you want to bring revolution, bring it now before I get into it. So don't just complain about it, what they do. You get your action. Just making a joke about it. So the left was extremely against us. They are putting our death uh, notices on top of our doors that the, you'll be killed and so on and so forth. So this is that one. And then the right was very angry with us. They thought this is another way bringing communism. We are mobilizing the poor people because uh, they used to do the only the labor to be mobilized, to rise against the state. Now I'm mobilizing all kinds of people in the villages, uh, all the poor people mobilizing. And someday, once it's done, they will rise against the state power and take over the state. So they had a very simple explanation. So I'm under attack from both right and left. And then the other one is more vicious one was the religious one, because I'm lending money to the women. They said, oh my God, they're going to, they said, this is going to destroy the whole religion. He is bringing money to the women, and women will go out of the house, and the whole basis of religion will fall apart. So they hated us. They think you are the enemy of uh, people uh, by bringing micro credit to the poor women, and so on. So we had to explain how it is consistent with the religion, uh, giving money to women doesn't destroy the religion, uh, how Islam in its past, uh, the many women were business women. Uh, even even uh, Prophet Muhammad, he married a businesswoman. So all these are historical facts we have to share with them, explain. Nobody listens what you say when you make up their mind. So this, so we have to attack from all directions. But you continue because you believe in what you do. So you continue to see that finally they will get around. That is truly inspiring. Uh, so we, you also share a philosophy that we are all entrepreneurs and we can change the world with one micro loan at a time. So how can entrepreneurship help reduce inequality and generate wealth, especially for those from least developed countries? No, big question. <laughs> uh, just give you, give you a question myself. Just for a second, you imagine. Uh, all people in the world, every single person in the world, became entrepreneurs. Every single person. Will there be wealth conservation? No. So you see the root of the wealth concentration? If we all became entrepreneurs, we'll be picking our own wealth. We'll not give it away to somebody else. Today we work for them. Because we are not entrepreneurs. Because our education system has taught us that when you finish our degree, you have to send a job application and get the best job possible. The best school you get, you get the best job. If your grade is good, your job is good. See, these are the connectivity, that the best school to best job, best grade to best job, and so on. So this is how we are grown up, struggling hard to get so that I can get a job, get good, good uh, grade or get to the best school possible, sell off everything to get to the best school so that I can have a good job. Because they have put it in our head, the job is the destiny of every single person. I said, this is absolutely wrong. Human beings are not born to live a life serving others. Human beings are independent beings. Throughout our entire history of mankind, we were not serving anybody. We were independent people. When we are in the caves, we are not sending job application to anybody. We became hunters. We became gatherers. We became farmers. We always did our own thing, protected our life. It's only recent thing that they said, no, some people will hold the capital, they will invest, and you have to work for him because you don't have the capital. There we go. So we have designed everything, all the education, all the bringing, so that we are prepared to become a good servant, so that we can work for somebody. I said, that's a terrible thing that we have done to human beings. To me, each human being is a unique creation. Each one of us is a unique creation. And packed with unlimited creative capacity, each human being, 
no matter where you are born, doesn't matter. Just because you're a human being, you're packed with unlimited creative capacity. You can do anything you want in the world. That's your capacity. That's how you're born. Job, the moment you take a job, you surrender your creative capacity. You no longer control your creative capacity. Somebody else controls you now. You are dri driven by orders, instructions. So you are a kind of a robot now. You're not a human being anymore. I said, what a damage we have done to the whole idea of being a hum human being and squeeze away all the creativity and turn into someone taking orders and performing this. We became sort of a mercenaries. When you take a job, basically we became mercenaries. We fight your war on your behalf. You give the guns and the uh, bullets, we go and fight it and bring the money to you because you're the boss. And you happily give me every month a little bit. Take care of me so that I can. And I'm happy I get a promotion after three years, five years. I'm very happy I had a good retirement benefits. Life is not retirement benefits. Life is much bigger than that. So we gave away all this just for one thing. Said that I get a promotion. I get a secure job. See, lure of secure job has made me surrender everything. So I said, that's what education system is at fault. Because the moment you enter an education system, they're busy trying to polish you up. So that ultimately the product they produce is a job ready young people. And I keep saying, that's what a shameful way to describe a human individual person, job ready young people. I said, we shouldn't be creating an institution to make job ready young people. We should be, our education system should be making life ready up so that they are prepared for the life, for the purpose for which he or she is born. See, the purpose is completely squeezed out of every single student. There is no purpose. Purpose is only job. Job cannot be a purpose of human being. Purpose is much grand. I build the whole world. I build this. I have imagination of this. Imagination is something which drives me. And that's what I want to do. And that's freedom they want to enjoy. So I said, every human being are born as entrepreneur. Job is the wrong direction. It's created all the massive distortion in our society and everything because of that. So I said, if we tell every young person in school, look, you have two options. At least give them options. You have two options. You can be a job seeker. You can be an entrepreneur. Choose your path, which one you want to take. We'll teach you about it. That's a, that at least is better than now with the one track people. Everything you do, at the end, you have to have a job. That's the whole purpose. And other things that additions are grades and all that, see, schools are additional. But at the end, you have to find a job. I said, no, you, have, you can be an entrepreneur. And for and becoming an entrepreneur, finance becomes very important. And I keep saying, finance is the oxygen of entrepreneurship. The moment you withdraw that oxygen, people are helpless. They, with empty hands, you cannot be entrepreneur. You need finance. So you design a financial system. They will be waiting for you in the school as you grow up. Say, look, whenever you are ready to invest, I'm here, I'm waiting with money for you to invest in your business. And then I start thinking that these guys, these guys are waiting for me. So what kind of business I can? I said, look, I'm doing this. Is it okay for you? No, no, you try to do it a little better. Then I'll be the one. Okay, I'll do that. And I don't have to finish school to become an entrepreneur. That's another charming thing about it. But you have to finish school to get a job because you need a piece of paper. Unless you have that piece of paper, you're not job. You're not getting the job you want. So you have, you have long waiting to get. For entrepreneurship, you know, you can be in a school and you're running a business at the same time. At any point. Many of our top business people in the world never finish school. So what's great about finishing school? I need to know what I need to know and I'll do it in my way. Why do I have to wait for a piece of paper? So anyway, entrepreneurship is the one which will drive things happen. That's what direction, that's the creativity brings in. I don't want to surrender my creativity. So that's where again, I depart from what the 
conventional economics says you have to be a job seeker. I said, no, we are entrepreneurs. We are not job seekers, we are entrepreneurs. They said they are the only one kind of business. I said, no, there are two kinds of business. The business to make money and the business not to make money, but to solve problems. So it's a choice you make. Some people say, why should I do the business not to make money? What is in for me? I say, it's very simple. Making money may be happiness. It's ultimately, it's about happiness. Making money may be happiness. Making other people happy may be super happiness. So you try it out. So don't think it's the only happiness. I said, super happiness is waiting for you. But you never tried it. If you try it, you see, it's a fantastic feeling when you see people who don't have water to drink. You brought water to them. People who don't have health care ever, you brought health care for them. And you do it in a business way. You don't do it as charity because charity money has only one life. You do it so it business grows. You continue to do that. You can bring housing, anything. You bring education. Anything you want, you can turn it around. You can create a business, social business, to bring it happen. So microcredit. Banks don't give it, we'll give it. we we'll create a social business to bring it to you. And they said it cannot be done. We say it can be done. They say you cannot, it's not profitable. We say it's profitable. But I don't take the profit. Profit is plowed back into the business because that's not my intention. And I'm happy about it. They say you are losing. You are you are not a successful one. I say I'm successful one. I'm touching so many lives, and you are not touching those. You are making people hate you. Thank you for that, sir. Those are indeed very true words. So we have one question from the audience. So Kaushik GV asked, "How did COVID affect microfinance industry, and when will it come back to normalcy?" Uh, COVID affected everybody. All over the world, so it's not just the microcredit and so on. The fact that they cannot do the function of the normal thing, uh, so you have to be prepared for such eventuality when such an accident happens. And in Bangladesh, we have to be ready all the time. Pandemic is a new one; we didn't have it in our disaster list. But Bangladesh is a country of disasters. Very soon, very soon, you'll hear Bangladesh is under flood. Our flood season is coming. It's a routine thing. When the flood water comes to your uh, frontier, you have fun. Flood water came, children play with the water and so on. It's nothing, it's an usual thing. Just like you have snow in the season where the snow falls. It's fun. But snow can be very dangerous for life too, if it goes to extreme. Similarly, sometimes flood water rises so high it enters your house. Still, you're okay as long as it's tiny little water coming into the house. But then water level rises. It goes over your bed. Then you don't know where to go. You can't cook, you can't sleep, and so on. So this becomes dangerous. Then you have floods every 10 years, 12 years. Flood, where flood water goes over your roof. So these are the disaster levels. So we are prepared for disaster. So you're talking about how do you cope with pandemic? Before that, you should be asking, how do you cope with floods? It's a routine thing. It ha and poor people are the first one to get hit because their houses are the flimsy one falls right away. Their positions are so flimsy, it just gets destroyed. Their businesses get destroyed. How do you do that? So we have all this included into the system. So that system is disaster proof because we make all the arrangement, what you do and so on. Like in the flood, in extreme flood, what we do, uh, we, we say every branch, say like Grameen I Bank has uh, more than 2000 branches. Every branch manager has the authority. He or she can declare his branch a disaster branch. Meaning people are now suffering, they're not in a mood to pay you back. The moment it's announced, Officially, all banking activity stops, just by a declaration. And he reports to the head office that I have declared my branch a disaster branch. And head office accepts it because he has the power to do that. And he knows what is the responsibility for that. Responsibility is now you have to save people. You're not doing lending, uh, lend, uh, not taking money from the people and so on. What you're doing, you're protecting people. Take people from the flood affected area, to the dry area. It's your responsibility now. All your borrowers, you have 4,000 borrowers in your branch. 
standard branch. So you have to save all those 4,000 people, take to some dry places and feed them at your cost because they don't have any money or any food, so you feed them. So this process continues until the flood water was gone. Then you help them go back, they settle. And then you raise the question, are you ready to start business? If you need money, I'll give you the money. I'm waiting with the money. So that even if you start earning one rupee a day, don't forget to do that. This is a start of the engine so that you can do that. Feel happy to do that. I'll feel happy to do that. So we have to carry this and we have our funds available for this so that during the period we can continue. So all of these things are built into the system. The system. So this was another disaster of another kind. So we had to adjust all those things. So, that, so we said, if people cannot survive a disaster, then the bank cannot survive either. The bank is of them. Bank and people are not separate thing. It's the same thing. So in order for your survival, the bank's survival, you must make sure every single person that you've connected with you survives and their children survive. Make sure that education is not interrupted as much as they can, they can continue because this is your people. So this is how you, you it's imagination. What is the system like? What is the institution is about? Here we are in a capitalist system. We have distanced the institution from the people because they are only interested in your money. We are not interested in your money. We are interested in your solution. So if you, if you get into trouble, more trouble, then I'm not a solution for you. I have to prepare myself to demand solution. If I fail in one time, I have to go back, reflect, and improve myself so that similar thing happens this time I'll do better. Cyclone is one of the disaster, by the way. We have, oh, sorry, uh, flood. Cyclone is another one. Tidal wave is again common thing. Bangladesh It's washed away the whole population entirely. How do you start? Saline water coming in, another problem. So this is a disaster after disaster. We continue. And global warming is raising the flood water and the water, sorry, the ocean water. Sea level rising and the water is coming inside the country. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, again, we are extremely honored to have you with us. And thank you once again for being a part of our online lecture series. Thank you. To the audience, uh, please find the attendance and feedback form link on the chat. Kindly do fill the same. Participants who attend four or more live lectures as a part of Shastra Spotlight 2021 would get e-certificates. Next up, we'll be having a fireside chat with co-founder and creator of Julia Computing, Dr. Viral Bisha, at 5 p.m. We request you all to attend this lecture too. We thank the audience for your patience and hope you had a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you once again, sir. This is an honor. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good to Bye -bye. see you. Good to see you.